powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on KPAX, Montana's news leader. Good evening, I'm Dennis Bragg. And I'm Jill Valley. Although there's no specific action on the table, some people are worried grizzlies along the northern continental divide are about to lose protection as a threatened species, a step they see as ruinous to the bear's future. Others believe there are so many bears, it's getting tough to have them as neighbors without a little more control. And it really is those complicated and often overlapping views that are putting more pressure on federal, state, and tribal managers. There had been indications this week's Missoula meeting of the Northern Continental Divide Ecosystem Subcommittee would draw a crowd, and it did. Although the business agenda was cleared quicker than scheduled, people from a variety of backgrounds wanted to talk about the Grizzlies' future in and around Glacier, the Bob, and the Front. That included people sporting badges calling for the bears to stay listed, saying it's premature and shouldn't be taken away until there are several thousand bears, not just several hundred. Since we are all from a common creator, a common mystery, we are children of that common mystery, and since we're all children of that common mystery, we are brothers and sisters. It's that simple. If we choose to accept our responsibilities towards one another, we will protect the bear. If we defy this responsibility, we will let the bear perish, and we will not be too long after the bear. Despite growing accounts of bear conflicts with ranchers and hunters, especially on the front, they believe steps can be taken to keep grizzlies and people safe. Tell them to go hunt somewhere else. I mean, if you live in Montana and you hunt here, or you come from outside this state to hunt here, you have to deal with the fact that we have grizzly bears. Carry bear spray. I mean, it's, there are solutions to this. If the bears have easy access to all these things, of course they're going to come down and have a picnic. But if you make it harder for them and they have negative, re, you know, negative consequences, they're going to learn to stay away from those areas. However, ranchers and residents want more help. If we take care of the problem bears, more of the good bears are going to stay alive. While much of the discussion here was about delisting of the grizzlies, when the interagency grizzly bear committee meets in Missoula in a couple of weeks, they'll actually be looking at the conservation strategy, how to manage the bears regardless of what happens to their protection status. That's work planned between now and next summer. Produce a final strategy, a conservation strategy, and then bring it to IGBC to approve, and then for the chairman and the directors to sign. That document, that conservation strategy is a real important document because it's how we're going to take care of grizzly bears into the future in Montana. Uh, we're all pretty excited about it. Judging from Wednesday's turnout, it's not just the scientists and biologists that are getting excited. Now, the larger interagency grizzly bear committee will meet for two days in Missoula. That's on December 12th and 13th. Turning out a weather, a pretty quiet day for the most part, but we could see some patchy freezing fog tomorrow morning. Here's Aaron Yost with the latest. Aaron. Yeah, and we will, I think, definitely see that, especially now that we continue to clear out as far as our sky cover is concerned. And you can tell it's starting to clear out cold rather quickly in western Montana. Hamilton earlier today when we were still seeing some of those clouds this is from our first security bank ICAM. Looking at the radar and satellite, of course, nothing to talk about on radar, but the gray there, those clouds starting to lift. And the longer we stay clear, the better the chance of getting some of that fog development for tomorrow morning. Much of tomorrow will be mostly cloudy, dry, but but we do have another system headed our way for tomorrow night into early Friday morning and an even larger system potentially this upcoming weekend area wide. Details on all that coming up in your forecast. The future for lecturers at the University of Montana is once again uncertain after a draft of a letter indicates no contracts will be renewed following the spring semester. MTN's Eric Clemens has been following the story. He spoke with a member of UM's faculty union. He talks about what this could mean for changes at the Missoula campus. This letter has not yet been sent out, but if the current draft is any indication, University of Montana administrators are taking drastic measures to make ends meet. UM leaders have been working for some time to slim down the budget, but faculty union leaders worry this is not an appropriate action and could end up hurting the school more than it helps. The current draft of a letter from University of Montana administrators indicates that the school is preparing to eliminate wholesale the position of lecturer from the school as it currently exists. Instead, the school would hire adjuncts to fill the role. The decision could impact as many as 35 lecturers. This would allow the school more flexibility in hiring as year-long contracts would no longer exist and teachers would be hired on a class-by-class -class basis. 
UM Faculty Union spokesperson Lee Banville worries this could drive away quality professors. I think what it means is if you're a good one, you're going to leave. And really, when you look at who, who these people are, you know, the, the people like Gary Kerr, or Robert Stubblefield, or Josh Slotnick from the Peas Farm, these are like institutions within the institution, and they are like part of the, part of the reason a lot of kids come here. So the experience of undergrads is going to be really damaged by this. Banville worries this decision could have long-lasting and far-reaching consequences for the school. These are decisions that will change the way that the university operates. It will change the kinds of people who are teaching here and you know the kinds of people we attract in the future. A key issue for the faculty union is the speed with which this decision could be made and the apparent lack of transparency that went into the process. For it to be made essentially quite suddenly and without any input from, I mean, they didn't talk to the union at all about this. You know, it just seems like we're back to where we were, you know, five months ago where I thought maybe we were going to actually have more of a working together thing, but that appears not to be the case. Now, again, this letter has not yet been sent out, and as a draft, it could still change before it is sent out. Banville expects something substantial to happen by early next week at the latest. UM officials have not yet released a statement regarding this letter. In Missoula, Eric Clements, MTN News. If those contracts aren't renewed, about 35 positions could be eliminated by next May. Faced with a growing problem of people living in recreational vehicles in city right-of-ways, the Missoula City Council is considering whether to adopt a ban against urban camping. Some of these folks are um, creating noise and creating other uh, disturbances that are of issue for neighborhood stability. And of course, we're talking about parking in the right-of-way, so we're always concerned about the safe movement of traffic. While staff told the council this morning that 99% of people caught illegally in RVs parked in the city right of way will voluntarily leave, they say the city needs a specific ordinance to deal with the real problem cases where people refuse to leave. The proposal would leave exceptions for limited RV parking outside a host home or for people staying for sporting or other special events. Council members support the idea of a tool for police and code compliance officers, but they want to proceed carefully so it doesn't criminalize the homeless. There's obvious public safety issues involved with, you know, people disposing of human waste and gray water in the right of way, but then there's also um, the, the homelessness issue and um, it, it's all connected as a, as a big, big problem. The City Council has scheduled a public hearing for December 18th. The hard work of hundreds of community members over the last year and a half has made Kalispell's Woodland Ice Rink a much more modern facility for skaters. MTN's Jack Ginsburg takes us to the grand opening. 18 months ago, the Flathead Valley Hockey Association decided they wanted to ramp up their program by creating a more practical skating facility. Hundreds of volunteers from the community spent all summer fundraising and building a permanent ice rink at Woodland Park, and tonight, all that hard work came to fruition. There was a ribbon-cutting ceremony, kids skated on the new ice, and paper plate awards were given to community members who helped this dream become a reality. In the past, they had to go through a weeks-long process to set up the rink, just to be torn down at the end of the winter. It was a very long process. We had the... We had hundreds of five gallon buckets from Home Depot and we'd have to fill every single one of them full of water and place them on little tubes to help them stay under the sand and that took several weeks but now with all the work we put in this summer we're not going to have to do that ever again which is really exciting. The new rink comes with better cooling technology that will make it easier to maintain the ice throughout the winter. It gives us a longer uh, a longer season. So whereas we used to didn't start until November, we're hoping to now begin our season in mid-October and run it through March. One of the best features of the new rink is the layer of concrete underneath the ice. When the warmer months come, the kids will be able to trade their skates for sneakers and be able to play summer sports like basketball and lacrosse. Bussy thinks the new rink will become a local favorite that can serve the community for years to come. It could really become a great outdoor venue uh, and really revitalize Woodland Park, we believe. Some of the hockey players also voiced their excitement about the new rink. You guys excited for the new hockey rink? Yeah! You like skating? Yeah! Score some goals. Yeah! In Kalispell, Jack Ginsburg, MTN News. 
The rink is already getting a jump start on community-wide events as there will be a beer fest this weekend. Well, KPAX is proud to partner with First Security Bank and Glacier Banks for our annual holiday food drive. We're asking people to drop off your non-perishable food donation or even a cash donation at any First Security Bank location in Missoula or Glacier Bank in Northwest Montana. All of your food donations will stay right here in Western Montana. Still ahead, Aaron says we may have another foggy morning tomorrow. Her forecast for the rest of the week is next. And later, these French daredevils refine the idea of catching a flight with an incredible stunt over the Swiss Alps. Still ahead here on KPEX.